I'm going to install a under $9 WaveShare Pulse Width Management Fan onto an NVIDIA Jetson Nano. This is the cheaper version of the fan. Many people get the Noctua fan, which is a bit more expensive, maybe $14. Make sure that the fan is 5 volt, 4 pin, and that it's pulse width management or PWM. This particular unit from WaveShare came with five screws. We're only using four of the screws, so one of the screws is an extra one. I got the cheaper unit because I'm just using this unit for testing and I've had a similar fan before. And I've used it for a couple of years and it worked out fine. So I'm going to position the fan and then wrap the cabling up a bit. These are self-tapping screws. So I'm just going to screw it down enough so that the screw is held in place. You don't want to crank it down too much or you might strip out the threads. It just has to be tight enough to stay in place for your specific application and mine's usually just right on the desk. I have the air flowing toward the CPU. I researched online as to whether the air should be being pulled away from the heat sink or going toward the heat, heat sink and most people have said that it's better to push the air toward the heat sink so that's what I'm doing. With the four pin connector, it only goes in one way attached to the motherboard. I'm going to use a removable Velcro strap here to keep the wire uh, close to the CPU to, to avoid tangling. And that's it for the hardware assembly portion of this. For the testing, I'm going to use some applications with the Rico Theta Z1 for live streaming. And this should push it enough so that the fan will kick in. So this red USB cable is for the Z1. It's a 360 camera. I'm also going to power this thing initially from a 2 amp micro USB cable. And I've got a Wi-Fi adapter here as well as the keyboard and mouse and a monitor. So it's pulling a fair bit of power from it. So by default, the fan's running at full speed. And of course, it's going to cool it down, but you probably want to reduce the noise of this thing. So I'll just set up the Z1, the 360 camera, with this quarter inch by 20 thread per inch riser. Everything is nicely configured for the test now. I'm going to use the Jetson Fan CTL open source package. This will give me a little bit more flexibility as to how I want the fan to kick in at different temperatures. And ideally, I just want it to be silent when I'm normally running it and then have the fan kick in when the CPU heats up. Uh, usually, in my case, it's going to be when the camera is streaming into the Jetson and it's doing some processing on the video stream. So I'll install the Jetson Fan CTL with the install.ch script and it's creating some config files in the Automagic Fan area. Initially the fan kicks in at uh, 20 degrees or it stops and then the max is at 50 degrees centigrade. So looking at Tegra stats, uh, the CPU is running at 30. So I'm going to just do a few tests and see if I can make it run cooler because I don't really care about the thermal throttling unless the thing is streaming here. So I'm going to raise the fan off temp to 30 degrees C and we'll see whether this makes the unit run quieter or not. If you edit the configuration to set the, the different thermal thresholds, you do need to restart the Automagic Fan service or reboot the Jetson. It's 
So it's still running uh, with the threshold, the, the lower threshold at 30 C. So what I'm gonna do is just try to crank it up a bit, maybe set it to 40 and just see uh, what the behavior is like. So it's still a little loud. I'm gonna put it to 40 and I'll use it like this for a while and we'll see if it makes a difference. So without load other than the, you know, the base desktop operation here, it is running about 32 degrees, 33 degrees centigrade. So we'll next try a stream here. So I'm using a USB cable connected to a Ricoh Theta Z1 camera to test the live stream here. And it's using GStreamer with a modified version of LibUVC. I next put the camera in front of a laptop computer running a movie just to see uh, how jerky it is, right? So. Instead of showing a, like a pe people moving where I have to wave my hands all the time, I'm just using the movie on the laptop screen to show what the video performance of this 360 degree equi rectangular video stream is. So you can get a sense to see how smooth it is by looking at the video screen or my hand waving, right? So it does seem reasonable, uh, especially for testing, and it might depend upon what, you, what you're doing, right? Whether you need to actually display the stream onto the Jetson a monitor, or whether you're just using this for testing, and you're gonna restream it from the Jetson. I'm next gonna test GST launch to stream it in initially 4K. And it does appear to be working at 4K. Um, it's actually looking pretty good here. So the performance is pretty good. There's no AI processing on it right now. And you can see when I did the cat on it that I had the resolution set to 4K. And I'm now running it through OpenCV. This is now a Python script that's using OpenCV Python. And it's using a frame resizing. The frame resizing is done with OpenCV. This is just a test to see whether OpenCV can work and what the temperature is like. See, it's really creeping up to the 40 degree C temperature uh, threshold. And uh, it looks fine with this simple OpenCV resizing. I took a break for lunch and uh, during lunch, the UPS or FedEx, uh, some type of service came and Coincidentally, they just dropped off this power supply, which is the barrel connector of the for the Jetson Nano. Uh, again, this is a maybe a cheaper one that I bought here. Maybe I think it's like fifteen dollars, and this will supply four amps. So there's a jumper here. You see where my finger is? There's a jumper that if you if the pins are not jumped, you'll get the power from the micro USB. If you want to use the 4 amp barrel connector, which I recommend, then you need to jump the two pins. And now that, now when the pins are jumped, and I'm using the barrel connector, the LED is now green. 
Well, next text, can he edge detection and other transformations with OpenCV? Again, this is a different Python script, and it's testing the canny edge detection uh, and other features of OpenCV, like color transformation. Uh, there does appear to be some latency here, and I did check, and I have set the script on line 8 here to 2K. So if it's in 4K, uh, it's probably even longer latency on this. You know, it's kind of a low-powered Jetson Nano here. This is the $100 Jetson Nano, not the Jetson Orem Nano, or maybe the Jetson Xavier, both of which would give you better performance than the low-end Jetson Nano, which is usually used for testing and for hobbyists, although you could use it for certain applications. For example, you could use the Justin Nano to prototype your concept and then maybe justify the bigger budget for the Orem. I have another video using a mini PC and the stream was much better on a $270 mini PC with a Ryzen, no external GPU. As a quick test, I don't have to keep waving my hand. I did put my mobile phone up here with a Marvel trailer of Thor, the movie, uh, just to see you know, how fast this thing is processing uh, these four transformations. The conclusion is that the device does work, and you can do some testing and experimentation, especially if you already have one. Uh, it won't work with the Raspberry Pi because of the lack of hardware acceleration at 4K. You'll get better performance if you use just a normal PC running Linux, ideally with a discrete graphics card. However, if you need a low power portable board, uh, one of the Jetson family might work. Obviously, if you pay more for the Xavier or the Orin, even the Orin Nano, it'll be a better performance.